Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 14, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the episode, and this episode was a very highly anticipated episode by a lot of us, and I really liked it. I thought it was really, really good. I love the concept of the time loop. And this was actually directed by Danielle Panabaker. She made some interesting choices. I think she did a very good job. And yeah, the camera was a bit different, especially in the time loop scenes where we kept on seeing the person who was strapped up or who was tied up behind Cicada. And the camera kept on moving over very sharply. And I really did kind of like that. And so congrats to her on this very good episode. I want to talk about the episode as a whole and just go through bit by bit you know, the stuff that I like, but also breaking it down and talking about everything. So, let's first talk about the ending, and so we'll talk about the way that it ends first, because I feel like this is the stuff that we all want to get to first. So, Reverse Flash and Nora end off the episode together, and so Nora runs to the future, she time travels again, and she says, are we making things worse? And she's sort of in a panic from what's happened in the whole episode. And he shouts at her saying, I am the only speedster who knows anything. This is him raging at her because she doesn't fully trust him. But he's trying to go along with the plan. He's being very civil in the way that he's doing. As he says, he is trying to stop Cicada. They must stop him. But they also reveal in this scene that they must destroy the dagger. That is imperative. And they highlighted that. So... I feel like it's going to all come back and if Cicada's dagger's gone, he has no like proper, you know, weapon and there's no way that they can not take him down because it wouldn't drain their powers really unless somehow his chest does. But it seems like that's a critical thing going on past this episode with them trying to stop Cicada and so he also says, then we will save your dad from obviously crisis, I inserted that there. So I'm just paraphrasing, but the ending was caused because I believe that if you go back in the episode and you see Cisco and Nora talking in the time vault, you see that Cisco reveals that Thorn killed him in one timeline. So this creates even more mistrust of Thorn. And so this is what has enraged Thorn, and this is what's made Nora skeptical about their plans. But it seems like she's still going along with it. And at one point, I believe she will probably be. She'll probably realize this guy is just fucking with me. He's. Screwing me, he's probably gonna screw me over once I save my dad, and yeah, the timeline will be changed and things are gonna be messed up again. So it's going to be a new version of Flashpoint essentially. And so I have to ask, I've been thinking about this, especially after this episode, what are they going to do with Thorn? I don't know if they're going to introduce that Thorn is working with Nora, maybe they'll introduce that, but I don't know if Thorn's going to meet the rest of the team this season again. Is Thorn actually going to be the one to finally defeat Cicada? Is that part of the reason why they've got him? Is that the only way to get Thorn to do this? But then, in as a consequence of that, we let Thorn go, and Thorn's out in the world, and he can return for Crisis, which is next year. So, I don't know. You theorize about that in the comments down below. And so let's talk about this time loop stuff. So, traveling back in time, Nora does this over and over in this episode, and it's revealed she does it 52 times. 52 freaking times. That is massive. That's more than Barry's ever changed the timeline. So, there's 52 timelines she's created, and so in all of the different ones, as Cisco vibes it, everything changes just bit by bit, and so there's going to be big consequences. But we'll talk about the stuff with Barry at the end of the episode just later in this video. And so Nora is going crazy throughout this episode because she can't figure out how to stop Cicada and the way to actually do this. And she can't go further back in time and she can't reach her dad in the speed force and nothing is working. So first Killer Frost dies, then Cisco dies, then Cecile and it happens over and over again with this crazy montage that I really loved. I really did like the concept of this episode and I thought it was well executed and so yeah it was kind of entertaining to see all our characters die and so moving on let's talk about Barry and his Jay Garrick flashpoint coffee cup timeline speech so that is a lot of words but it is exactly what it is it's basically a repeat or sort of Barry looking back at his mistakes and teaching Nora as to her mistakes and so he says you can try and reset the timeline 
try and fix it but no matter how hard you try it's never going to be as it was so there is consequences and barry teases that there will be timeline changes and due to this episode of her changing the timeline 52 times there's going to be big ripples even if they're not felt straight away is going to happen and one of the re and one of these timeline changes is sherlock being back on track and nora doesn't know this at this point because she thinks oh he's still like last episode he's still sort of not on track and he's not going to be doing this but he is and i believe that is from nora's timeline changes in this episode and he reads off her symbols and so finally he's seemingly able to finally decode them and maybe we'll get the reveal next episode and maybe nora will be exposed at some point as to who she's working with because He's going to find out exactly what has been written down and she's definitely talking to someone and maybe her plans will be revealed along with that. And so later in the episode we have this amazing fight scene and it's in slow motion as Nora rewinds time. The team jump in through a breach and then Cicada's throwing his dagger in the air and it's all in slow motion, basically in flash time and the dagger comes back and it was just a really well executed scene and there may be some plot holes here but we'll talk about that in a second but one thing that keeps annoying me and you know it's happened so many times that i when i was watching the episode i i giggled i literally started laughing and this was when cicada flew off again i do like cicada but he's getting a bit repetitive he keeps on flying away they keep on doing the same thing over and over they take him down and then he's able to escape because no one tries to, you know, cuff him or, you know, just get him. No one tries to do it and he flies away over and over and over and it's getting a bit tiring right now. And that is probably my only problem with the episode is the fact that Cicada flies away again and nothing really happened apart from them fixing what was going on, which was great. But yeah, I'm kind of a bit fed up with that. Hopefully they do something different. So right now I think Cicada's a good villain, but he's not great. And so in regards to the plot holes, one plot hole potentially is how can they use their powers near Cicada? Well, I think the one reason as to why you could explain that perhaps they can use their powers for the short amount of time is due to the fact that the dagger is flying far away and I think that makes sense but as it comes closer maybe their powers should have stopped or something like that and although I love the scene it seems a bit illogical in the way it was executed but I think it was a great scene nevertheless if you sort of overlook the idea of maybe the plot holes being true so maybe it is far enough away to use their powers and so also it was a bit strange how Nora could run actually through Caitlin's ice I know that's nitpicking and so by the end of the episode with the timeline changing and everything changing if you remember in the cafe there's actually an Asian guy that gets the coffee and by the end of the episode it's some just white guy with a different name right so that is another element of the timeline change that was experienced so the two timeline changes that are vivid is obviously no one dies that's another one that's a separate one but the real big ones is now Sherlock is on track he's not thinking about his new potential girlfriend or wife that he's had from all these other Earths so that's a timeline change and the person has completely changed so that is big although it seems small at the moment it has a ripple and things will be changing and I think there will be definitely new consequences so is this a new version of flashpoint i know it's so small but i think by the end of the season something like that's going to happen it's going to be a new version of flashpoint because she's changed this 52 times and she keeps on time traveling you know she's changing it a lot so i reckon there will be a flashpoint kind of effect at the end of the season and so in regards to cisco i thought cisco was good in this episode it was extremely awkward the first few times which i know they were going for so i commend them for that and so Cisco finishes the meta cure and so it needs a month to settle or they find out they can go to the speed force and the dark matter and the speed force can act as a catalyst to speed it up and it will only take one hour and so Barry is gone in the speed force for most of the episode and you will obviously notice that in fact he's basically not in the episode barely at all only a couple minutes he has that great scene at the end where he does the Jay Garrick coffee cup speech but he was only in the episode just for the start and the end and so this was mainly due to I believe Grant's wedding being at the time that they shot this episode just before Christmas 
So that's a valid reason, and I don't think we needed him. I thought Nora was a great star of this episode, and so the cure by the end of the episode is ready to be used. Just the last thing that I want to talk about, Cisco in the episode, he has these different versions of himself. He has all these different versions of the same scene where he goes on this date, and so we get to see like the Flashpoint version of Cisco. He even drops the hint at Ramon Industries, you know, with the timeline changes, it makes sense that they include that. And, you know, a millennial influencer social media Cisco and just normal Cisco by the end. And so we're getting deja vu throughout the whole episode and he's vibing and seeing all these different things. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and this did help you out and you enjoyed the review, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.